Hey, you guys. Sorry, my husband just texted me. And we're talking about dinner. And he's like, so what are we doing for dinner? I'm like, I don't know. He's like, let me rephrase that. What would you like to have for dinner? How about you just take me out for a steak dinner? <laughs> so anyways, happy when is today Wednesday or is it Tuesday? I think it's Wednesday. Is it Wednesday? Hold on a second. Happy Wednesday, you guys. Today, I want to share my story. I want to share with you why I choose to live a life of no excuses. So we're just going to get down to it. So I have been in this business for three years. I started October of 2016, actually October 1st of 2016, three years ago. And three years ago, I was a completely different person. I was lost. I was broken. I didn't love myself. Um, my husband and I, our relationship was, it was good, but <clears throat> it could be better. And so he told me to join Cincy. I thought he was crazy. I was going for nursing at the time. I have all my prereqs done for nursing. And I actually was applying to nursing school again because I was put on the wait list the first time. And so I had reapplied and then my husband was like, you should do Cincy. I did tell him, you know, I really don't want to go back to work. I think I'm just doing this nursing thing just to be like, hey, I got a nursing degree. So he saw this opportunity and told me to join. And I was like, no, no, no. And then eventually I joined. So I joined October of 2016 and I haven't looked back ever since. Has it always been easy? No, no. I have had a lot of hard times. But I didn't give up and I didn't make an excuse as to why I couldn't proceed forward. Now, yes, my business did grow rather quickly, but I worked really hard for that to happen. And I showed up every day. I did what I needed to. And so it has been great. But let's talk about the struggles because you guys, I have a lot of struggles. I still have a lot of struggles. Things that happened and I haven't even talked about. I know. I haven't even said a word about it because I choose to embrace it, move forward, and stay positive. There's no point in dwelling on some of these things. So I was in an abusive relationship for five years. I had three kids with him which is Andrew Mason and Amaya. And one day, well, actually I moved into a house and one day I was just like, what the heck are you doing with your life? Like it was an epiphany. I just had like a wake up call moment. And it's like, what are you doing? Why are you with him? Why are you putting up with this? Why are you letting someone down you every single day? I was working two jobs at the time, two full-time jobs. I had to pay for daycare because I couldn't trust my kids' dad to watch my kids, so I paid for daycare. Um, I had to pay my gas, lights, water, car payment, cell phone, all that on my own. This was before I met Tim. And so I was a single mom for a long time. And that was the hardest time of my life. <laughs> and so after being with my kids' dad five years and putting up with all that abuse, I decided to leave. And I went through a year-long custody case. And it didn't turn out the way that I wanted it to. But, you know, that's what we were working with. So that's what we went with. Um, I had gotten into another not-so-good relationship after my kids' dad pretty quickly, too. Which is actually, a lot of people don't know this, but it's actually Liam's dad. He has never met his dad. We do not talk about it because Liam doesn't know any differently. So I'm just going to put that out there for those who didn't know. Clearly, you could look at Liam and tell, but in case you didn't know, that's what we got going on over here. And so Tim and I had always been friends, and we started off with dating, which is something I never did. I just always jumped into relationships. And so Tim wanted to be with me, and I didn't want to I didn't want to drag somebody through all that because I was getting ready to go through this custody case. And I said, what the heck? Let me see, like what this guy is all about and so we dated and got together and now we're living happily ever, happily ever after but um it wasn't always 
easy. So when I joined Cincy three years ago, I was broken from those two relationships. I was heartbroken for my kids. I didn't love myself. Um, and you can, I mean, if you want to ask my husband, you can ask him. He knows all this. Like, we are an open book with each other. And, you know, he still has to give me reinsurance. I still sometimes struggle with not feeling good enough for him. Um, it's not as bad, but I, I sought therapy a year ago. Um, before we got married, I was in therapy for myself to overcome all these issues that I had. My husband and I, we go to therapy together. We've been going, I think, almost a year now, I think. Going on a year, we've been going to um, marriage counseling or whatnot. Oh my gosh, we have learned how to communicate with each other and like, best thing ever. But that's not the only struggle that I have. I have, well, my oldest plays competitive baseball. That's not a like struggle, but it's a busy struggle. Like we're getting ready to go into our winter workouts and he has practice five times a week. We drive an hour to and from baseball. Yeah, <laughs> an hour to and from five days a week for my oldest to play elite baseball. Hey, you guys, happy Wednesday. Thank you. I need to reply back to, thank you, Danielle. That's so sweet of you. So we drive an hour to and from baseball. We're getting ready to do that five days a week. Uh, my son's baseball is thousands of dollars. And it's not about the money. I mean, let me rephrase that. If I didn't sell Scentsy and bring in what I do, there's no way my husband could support the whole household and for my kids to get to do all their extracurricular activities. So yes, I guess it is about the money because I do, I pay for half my son's baseball bill. We're just going to put that out there. I think I need to drop the income disclosure <laughs> in this video. So if somebody has that handy, if you'll just drop it down for me. Otherwise, I can go in and copy and paste it. Um, oh, I don't know if I can upload a picture. Can I upload one while I'm here? Hold up. I may be able to. Nope, I can't. Well, if anybody has income disclosure, you might want to drop that just in case. So I don't get in trouble for speaking about money. Um, so yeah, so we spend thousands of dollars a year on baseball. My eight year old has a mental illness, like a legit <laughs> mental illness. And we have struggled with that for a few years with finding him a place to go. We have bounced around different therapies for the last two years. And, um, he has, it's called DMDD and he has ADHD. The DMDD is like a disruptive mood disorder because they cannot diagnose him with um, schizophrenia because of his age or bipolar so we're dealing with that he goes to therapy every other week and then um the place he goes they're going to manage his meds so i have baseball i have to go and do his appointments every other week my daughter has a failure to thrive um she is six and she's like 40 pounds i believe my five-year-old is way over 40 pounds but my daughter is healthy but um, once a year, we have to go. They found a mass on her kidney. So once a year, we have to go and get that checked to make sure the mass isn't growing. It's still non-cancerous and all that. Um, we have been all over the place for her. The endocrine clinic. We've been to the GI. We've been to the kidney. We've been to, um, we've had to check all her hormones and all that. So that's not as big of an issue now, her failure to thrive. She's just a small little thing. But I tell you what, <laughs> she's got a big personality. <laughs> um, we recently had, I'm not going to talk about the issue we recently had happen, but we had a very serious issue just recently happen. And um, we have to add an extra therapy for that. So I'm going to have to do that. The last issue that we've got going on, which we actually um, are just now getting into, but... Um, I have fibroids on my uterus and so I just went to a checkup yesterday and they have grown. I've had issues and my husband and I want to have a baby and um, so I walk into my doctor's office who I've had. She has delivered all my babies so I'm comfortable with her. 
And so she walked in. She's like, are you ready to have a hysterectomy? No. No, I'm not, actually. I'm only 27 turning 28. My husband and I want to have a baby. No, I'm not ready to have a hysterectomy. Now, mm, I took it well. I knew I knew she was going to come in and say that because I've had these fibroids for a while and they just continue to grow. So I, I was already prepared for her <laughs> to throw that option out there. Now, I told her that my husband and I want to have a baby, and so she named off my options. None of them were good ones. I could either have a catheter, like, up my leg and send, like, radiation into my uterus to shrink the um, fibroids. She named off this one other option. I can't remember. It wasn't a good one either, or the hysterectomy. Or we can... Um, so she prescribed me birth control to take for three months. I have to take prenatals. My husband has to go get checked to make sure he's okay. Um, and then we can continue on. And after I have, if I do end up getting pregnant after this baby, I will have to have a hysterectomy. So now I have to jump this hurdle of, am I truly ready before the age of 30 to have a hysterectomy and say, you know, I'm completely done. I'm not sure yet. I'm still kind of in between. But what I'm not allowing all of these things to do that I've got go on, stop me from working my business. Social media is a great tool to utilize to work your business and to bond with new people and make new relationships. Um, I have talked about some of my story on Social media, I've made great contacts with people who have gone through the same thing that I have. Some of them have bought from me. Some of them have hosted and whatnot. And, yeah, she didn't say, Danielle, she didn't say how large. I have to go get an ultrasound done. I think I'm going next week. Two weeks, maybe, when it's scheduled. But I have to have another one done. So, I'm busy. I'm busy. I've got a lot going on. But you still can work your business. There are still ways to work it. There are still ways to be consistent. You don't have to blast your Cincy business all over Facebook. Use your story. Share your story. Share things that you've got going on. Be comfortable with your situation to share it. And reach out. Find people who are going through the same thing that you are that you can relate to. Because this business is about relationships and building relationships with people. That's going to get you the long-time customers. That's going to get you the people who are going to join your team because they like you. You're relatable. They can relate to you. You're easy to get along with. You're positive. They l people love positive people. I'll tell you that right now. People feed on positivity. At least I do. I don't have time for negativity in my life. Like, I just have no room for it. I let it control my life. And after going to therapy... I have chosen not to allow it to control my life, not to feed into it. So I don't feed into negativity. If you're negative, like, I'm sorry, but you got to go. <laughs> I just don't have time for it. And I don't say that to be rude. I just, I've been through the ringer in life and I just don't have the patience for negativity. Like, yeah, the situation sucks, but like, let's find the positive spin in it. Because I tell you what, if you can choose to be positive and find the positivity in it, it's going to take you farther in life. And so, like, when I go up to my kids' school, all my kids' school knows what my son's issue is. They have seen it firsthand. They have seen the self-harm. They have seen him, um, how he talks about himself and whatnot. And so, I went in there, actually, a few weeks ago, and they're like, man, you are always so positive about this. And I'm like, look here, sister. Either you can dwell on it and let it bring you down, or you can choose to accept it and move on and find a way around it. All it is is a roadblock. That's all it is. You just have to detour around it. Same thing as when you're driving. I, I was just driving today and it said that whatever street was closed, I was doing a delivery and so I had to go around. But I found a way around to drop off her order. It's the same thing with your business. You're going to have roadblocks. You're going to have to detour around it. You're going to have to find a way to make it work. Find a new idea. Get on YouTube. Do a training. Find a new way to do whatever it is that you're trying to do, book parties, find a way to cleverly book them, find a way to um, keep them engaged, like 
it's this business is no different than driving a car. You know, you're in the slow lane and you have to pass somebody. You get over and you pass them and you get back in the slow lane. Like this, this business is the exact same. Sometimes it's going to be slow. Sometimes it's going to be fast. Some, some months you're going to recruit a lot. Some months you may not recruit. There's months where I don't recruit, but I don't stop working my business. I don't stop sharing the opportunity with people because you never know who your next rock star is going to be. So when you are working on social media... Um, and you're just like, man, nobody's liking my post. Nobody is, um, messaging me about the opportunity. Nobody is commenting that you're, that they're interested. Don't stop sharing the opportunity because somebody didn't like or comment on your post. Keep sharing the opportunity because you never know who is watching you. I, and I promise you, there are people watching you without them liking and commenting your post. Um, there are people who are going to refer you. I just had someone message me and she was like, hey, do you still have free toolkits available? Because she got referred to me. Yes, yes, I do have a free toolkit available for you to borrow because you never know, that could be my next rock star. You have no idea. So do not get discouraged because you're not getting a ton of engagement every single day on your Facebook. Sometimes that happens. That's just how the algorithm goes sometimes. Stay consistent. Keep doing what you need to do because I promise you the engagement will go up. I promise you people are watching your post. People are going to refer you. People are going to see that you're serious about this business and they're going to want to do business with you. How many of you chose me because you saw how consistent I was on social media? You saw how I shared my story every single day. You saw how I loved our products, how I was using our products. Seriously, how many of you chose me because of that. I'm sure there's some of you out there. I'm sure some of you saw my bow, my borrow pouch post and was like, hey, I think I want to try that out. It's free to borrow. Like, just borrow it. I guarantee you, a lot of you were like that. Somebody, one, you saw my story and you just were intrigued by it. The trips that my husband and I have been able to earn and haven't spent a dime out of pocket for. We've been able to take our kids on vacation with us to Cincy Family Reunion. We drive there. Um, every year, like, I'm sure you were watching me and were intrigued and reached out and ended up joining. I'm sure some of you saw a product and you're like, oh, that looks really pretty. You saw a warmer and you're like, oh, that's so pretty. And you reached out because I was consistent on either Facebook or Instagram because I'm on Instagram too. I just want that to sink in for... A minute some of you it took a year before you even joined me some of you I talked to for a year straight before you even decided to join Cincy with me but you want to know what I didn't do I didn't get discouraged when you didn't jump on board the first go around I didn't get discouraged when you ignored my message the second time I didn't get discouraged when the third time came around and I just followed up and had a friendly conversation with you and you still didn't join because guess what? Then the fourth time came around and you reached out to me and you were like, you know what? I think I'm ready. I would love to have you. I am an open arms type of person. I will let anyone in, but I'm not going to get discouraged when you tell me no. I, it's fine. Just because they say no now is not a no forever. Some of you have told me no, and that's fine. And I didn't judge you. And then you came back and you're like, you know what? I'm ready now. Well, let's go, girlfriend. I'm ready to do this business with you too. So when people tell you no, don't get discouraged because they said no. Keep their name on your list. I'm going to show you something real quick. Pause that for a second. I've got a list over here. And I try to write down everyone that I've talked to about the opportunity. I have it messaged um, about joining. I'm going to show you all the people I've talked to you. I have front and back pages of people that I talked to and haven't joined. And that is okay. They're just not ready now. That's totally fine. Mark their name down and continue to engage with them and continue to follow up every now and then. It's fine if they say no. But don't let it discourage you because they did. Move on to the next person. There's millions of people in this world. There's millions of people you can be sharing the opportunity with. Stay consistent on social media. Stay consistent on your Facebook and your Instagram. Utilize the story option on your Facebook and Instagram. 
go live go live like you guys i just wanted i just wanted to come on here and share my story because i'm so passionate about this business it's done great things for my family it has allowed me to stay at home for the last three years and of those three years i've never had a month where i didn't sell anything i've only had one month and that was my second month in business and I only sold like 300 something. Other than that, it's been 500 or more because I stay consistent. I do events. I am branded when I'm out. I have my Cincy shirt on now. My car is branded. If somebody asks me for a sample, I have business cards and whatnot in my little um, pouch thing in my backpack. Like I am ready to go. I want to be your Cincy lady. I want people to know I am serious about this business. I am in this for the long run. And it hasn't always been easy because there are times when I thought about quitting. As before, I, it was before I hit director. I've been a director for a year now, and before I became a director, um, you know, I would just be like, oh my gosh, like this business just—it's not. I was stuck at superstar consultant for like a year straight. And I was like, oh my gosh, my business just isn't moving. Like, what am I doing wrong? What do I need to be doing more of? I told my husband um, a few times, I'm like, I just feel like quitting. Like, I'm just, it's just not, I've been stuck here for a year straight. And it's not doing what I want it to do. And my husband's like, why are you going to quit? Like, you've, why? You've already accomplished so much. You've earned a trip. You've earned all these awards. You... I promoted so many times like why would you quit now and I'm like I'm just oh I'm stuck at superstar consultant and my husband's like don't quit I was like all right so I didn't quit and I kept pushing and I kept sharing my story and then I finally I promoted to director um, in October of last year and that's my anniversary month with Cincy and I promoted to director and director has been hard. I'm just going to be blatantly honest. Director has been hard. It is a hard title to maintain. And just to be completely honest, I haven't always been paid at director title. Now here recently I have. I have hit my title every single month. But when I first promoted to director, I didn't hit it every single month. And was it sad? Yes, it was sad. It was it was very sad. But I didn't let me I, I didn't let it stop me from not working my business. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna work a little bit harder next month to make sure I'm paid at director title. And next month I may have hit director, and then the following month I didn't. And I'm like, oh. And it would knock me back down, and I would feel so sad. And then I just continued to work on social media. I continued to do events. I continued to share my story. And then I discovered Chloe Cox. And actually, in Florida, she was sitting across from me at our table at the farewell dinner. And I didn't know her then. Now, if I would have known her then, I probably would have picked her brain a little bit. Because I have been following some of her techniques and ideas. And it has boosted my business tremendously and ever since I started following her, I'm pretty sure I've been paid at title, at director title, every single month since then. So, I would suggest checking out Chloe Cox on YouTube. Her channel is called OG Boss Babe. I have also posted some of her videos in this, um, in this team page. And if I post a training videos because I watched it and I think it has valuable information for you. So keep that in mind when I post a training video. I highly suggest you take some time to watch it. So a moral of the story is I didn't make excuses and let them hold me down. I took the detour route. I went around and I got back on track. So when you are feeling discouraged or down stop stop take the detour and go around find another way about it and then get back on track and that's all I've got for you today I just wanted to share my story with you and let you know that it hasn't always been easy for me either do I make it look like it's been okay yes 
but I want you to know that it hasn't always been easy for me. I have struggled in this business. I have struggled in life and I just have chosen to take a different approach and take that detour and then get back on track. So I'm just going to leave that there. I'm going to hop off here. If any of you, um, if you ever like need to talk about something or you need help in a certain area, please reach out to me. I am here to help all of you. It doesn't matter where you fall in my downline. I am here as your director or sponsor to help you. So reach out to me. And if I, if you don't get an immediate response, I may be busy doing something evening time. I usually shut down about eight o'clock at night and turn my phone on vibrate and use that time with my husband and we watch TV or whatever. Um, so if you don't get a response in the evening time, I'm probably spending time with my husband. Um, cause we need time together too. <laughs> um, so with that being said, I'm going to hop off here and I hope you guys have a fabulous rest of your Wednesday.